Okay, gang, let's get going with a probability review worksheet. Uh, chapter three is pretty difficult. It's a sharp increase in difficulty from chapters one and two, uh, which isn't to say chapters one and two are easy, uh, but in chapters one and two, we're just laying the groundwork with vocab and your basic graphs for stats. And then we throw in all of this probability and it's got some math and some formulas and all these different methods. So let's try and pick these apart. We'll do them by different types at a time. So we'll look at Venn diagrams first, and then we'll move over to the different types. And then towards the end, it'll just be a hodgepodge. Uh, we'll read through the problems and, and try and figure out which method we need to use. So number one here, we got a Venn diagram. So a survey was taken among a group of people. The probability that a person chosen speaks Spanish is 0.74, the probability that a person chosen speaks French is 0.32, and the probability that a person speaks both languages is 0.18. And it says, draw a Venn diagram that shows the relationship between events S and F. So I'm looking for the relationship, um, or the, the relation, excuse me, between events S and F, where S is the um, event that a person speaks Spanish, and F is the event that a person speaks French. So let's, let's see how far we can get with this. All right, now in terms of my Venn diagram, I'm gonna just label S over here and F over here. And as I look at my Venn diagram, it's good that there's some overlap because I, I did see this little buzzword that both, um, there is some folks that are speaking both languages. So I wanna go ahead and highlight that as one of those buzzwords I'm always on the lookout for. So if I look through this, all right, if I remember, where does the and live on a Venn diagram? It's in the football here. And when I'm creating my Venn diagram, it's always good to work from the inside out. So I'm gonna start with the football and then extend to the larger circles. So if I look at this, I've got 0.18. There's the likelihood in my football that somebody speaks both languages. So 18% of the folks in my survey spoke both languages. Great. Now I'm gonna work back to this S thing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the common error, and then I wanna talk about why this is bad, all right? So I get this every semester where students will say, oh, okay, I know this is 0.74 and this is 0.32. And I'm sketching these in lightly because again, this is incorrect. I cannot stress this enough. When I say that 74% of folks speak Spanish, it's the entire circle that has to add up to 74%. And when 32 speak French, it's the entire circle that has to add up to 32%. So if you look right now, if I were just to add these three numbers, if I added them together, clear all of this out, right? If I take 0.74 plus 0.18 plus 0.32, I'm already well over 100%. So this cannot be the correct Venn diagram. So let's try and back this up a little bit. I'm gonna erase this because this was incorrect. Really wanna stress that. All right, so let's think about this, right? We've got the entire circle has to add up to 74%. So left moon plus football has to add up to 74%. Now of that 74%, I already know where 18 of it is. So I'm gonna clear this out, but I'm gonna subtract 18% from 74%, and I'm gonna find out that the left moon has 56% attached to it. So there's the likelihood that somebody spoke only Spanish, because that's who lives in the moon, the folks that speak only Spanish. These are the folks that speak Spanish and French. All right, by that same rationale, I can't put the 0.32 here. This entire circle, so football plus right moon, that has to add up to 32%. So let me subtract 18 from 32 this time and find out that was 14%. Okay, all right, but with, with most of the types of problems we're seeing, with the Venns, with the trees, with the tables, there's these four areas, right? One, two, three, and then don't forget your outer universe here. And these four numbers, or in this case, these four relative frequencies, I should say, these four probabilities, they have to add up to one. 
So let's go find out who's in the neither category. So let me take 0.56. I'll take my left moon, add to it my football, add to it my right moon. That totals out to 88%. If I use the complement rule, since all four of these have to add up to 1, I will subtract 0.88 from 1, oops, excuse me, and I will get 0.12. Okay. So let's be super clear on who these folks are in terms of the languages they speak. If I put my pencil here, these folks, these 56% speak only Spanish. These 18% speak both languages. These 14% only speak French. And these 12% speak neither. I can say these collective 32% speak French. These collective 74% speak Spanish. But there is that 18% overlap. Okay? So there's, there's part A. We've set up our Venn diagram. And then as will be the case, once you get your Venn set up or, or later on when we get our tree set up or our table is all set up, then I'm gonna ask you some questions about them. So this is, what is the probability, or excuse me, use your Venn diagram to find the probability that a, sp a person speaks Spanish but not French. So I would say the, the key buzzword in there, in addition to probability, is the not. Okay, so there's a compliment that's gonna show up. So I want the probability that somebody speaks Spanish and not French. So I'm gonna write that up as S and F complement. Now, you could write this out in words. You could literally write a person speaks Spanish but not French. So if you're more comfortable writing the words out, great. I, I'm lazy, right? I've said it all semester. I, I like being efficient, so I'm just gonna use the complement notation. Now, once we get here, this isn't gonna involve one of our main formulas. This is just asking us to identify which part of the Venn diagram do we want. So who are the people that speak Spanish and not French? Here those folks are, right? Where my pencil is, and the probability that I'm in the left moon is 0.56. All right, so then we have the probability that a person speaks Spanish or French. The key buzzword here being or. Okay. All right, we have a formula for or, all right? It's formula one. I'm gonna just write it here. This is formula one on your formula sheet. It says the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And this is formula one on your formula sheet and it's one of those two formulas that you're always allowed to use. So we are allowed to use it in this problem. But I wanna be careful, I'm not gonna use A and B, I'm gonna use S and F because those are the letters for my particular problem. Okay, great. So instead of A or B, I'll write S or F. I'll put an S here, an F here, S, F. So I'm gonna just swap out my letters for my particular problem. So here we go. Probability of S or F equals the probability of S plus the probability of F minus the probability of S and F. Great, no problem. All right, so then let's start to go through this and be very careful with all of these numbers. Now, the probability of S it is not just 56%. It is this entire circle. So I need to do 56 plus 18, which we were given was 74%, because 74% of folks in my survey spoke Spanish, right? I need to add to that the probability that somebody speaks French. And again, it's not just the 14%. Yes, these 14% speak French, but so do these 18%. So collectively, in this giant circle, all right, the circle that has F's in it, I have 32% of my survey speaking French, okay? And then you can see, when I did this circle, I included the 18%. When I did this circle, I also included the 18%. So I've double counted that football, which is why we wanna subtract it out once for balance. So I will subtract out the overlap, which is the football, and I will crunch this number. So let's see what we got. We have 0.74 plus 
plus 0.32 minus 0.18, and we're going to get 0.88. Okay. And maybe you're, you're seeing this, maybe you're not. If you become pretty proficient in Venn diagrams and you see this pattern each time, great. And if not, dude, just use the formula, right? That formula will work for every method. But one of the unique things in a Venn diagram is if we talk about the or in the Venn diagram, not the and, but the or. The and is the football, but the or is left moon, football, right moon. It's always these three events that you speak one or both, right? One, the other, or both. So I also, if I ever want to get the or, and I happen to be on a Venn, this doesn't work in the other methods, but the probability of S or F, you can add left moon, football, and right moon. And if we take a look at those three numbers added together, if I do 0.56 plus 0.18 plus 0.14, lo and behold, there's 88% again. Okay. All right, so we've got two ways, specifically in the case of the Venn diagram, for us to figure out the OR. I can use the formula, which works with every method, or if you become more comfortable with probabilities and you're looking at a Venn, the OR is always left moon, football, right moon. Every time. All right, so let's scooch the page up. I'm gonna lose sight of my Venn diagram, but we'll, we'll circle back to it. So now I want the probability that a person will speak at most one of these languages. So we've talked about this phrase, at most, and I'm gonna highlight it because I want to make sure we chat about it again. All right, at most one. So if I've got at most, I'm just gonna make some notes on the side here, okay? So if I'm talking about the phrase at most, all right, that is synonymous with the mass symbol less than or equal to, okay? On the flip of that, even though it has nothing, it's not in this problem, I just want you to hear, if you ever hear the phrase at least, you can swap that out with the math symbol greater than or equal to. And this might be a lot of symbols right here, so maybe it's just better for me to draw arrows. All right. But if you hear at most, think about less than or equal to. If you hear at least, think about greater than or equal to. Okay. So now let's start to think about what this means in the context of this problem. So if I speak at most one languages, all right, so at most one language. All right, so I'm gonna take that and say that I speak less than or equal to one language. And I want you to think about what our options are here. How many languages are the people in our survey potentially speaking. And for our particular problem, right, they're either speaking zero languages, some of them are speaking exactly one language, and some are speaking two languages. Those are our options, right? You're either speaking one, the other, both, or neither. All right, so if I want less than or equal to one language, I want to include the folks that speak zero languages and one language. I, I don't want the folks that, in, that speak two languages. So I'm going to go back to my Venn diagram and we're going to look where are people speaking zero languages? Where are they speaking one language? Because those are the folks that I want to include. So let's go take a look, right? At most one language. So here we go. So let's keep track. When I put my pencil here, how many languages are these people speaking? One. I want to include 56%. All right, when I put my pencil here, how many languages are these people speaking? Two. I do not want to include them, so I am not going to use the football. I'm going to use the left moon, but I'm not going to use the football. How many languages are these people speaking here? One. So I want to include them. So I, so far I want to include them. I don't want to include them. I want to include them, right? One language, two languages, one language, and I'm looking for at most one language. How many languages are these people speaking here? Zero. Zero is less than or equal to one. So those are the three areas that I want to include 
So I'm going to add those probabilities together. Those are disjoint events, so we just add the disjoint probabilities. And that's what I'm looking for here. Now, it's up to you. If you want to write this in set notation, we can. But I think for the most part, we'll just say the probability of at most one language And the three areas I had were the 56%, the 14%, and the 12%. So let's, let's see what we got going on here when I add these up. What did we just say? 56, 14, and 12. So, oops, I must have done something. Oh, I didn't put a decimal point here. Let me fix that. So I'm going to do 0 0.56 plus 0.14 plus 0.12. I'm going to get 82%. And the reason I knew I was wrong before was because I got a number larger than 1. If we look back to what I typed before, I had 14.68. That can't be the answer. Every probability I ever ask you for is going to be a number between 0 and 1. So we're looking at 0.82. Okay. Now, just for extra, all right, if you wanted to write this up in set notation, and I'm not saying you have to, because it's a little bit more advanced. But if I spoke at most one language, all right, let me show you what that would look like in set notation or in complement notation, if you will. That's not how you spell language. Oh, that's not either. Ooh, I'm on fire. All right, got it. So these were the folks that spoke only Spanish. These were the folks that spoke only French. And these were the folks that spoke neither. So if you're only speaking Spanish, that means you speak Spanish and not French. These were the folks that only spoke French. So I would say these are the folks that spoke French and not Spanish. These were the folks that spoke neither, so I'm going to add to that the probability, oops, let me erase for a moment, the probability of not French, or actually we'll go in order, it doesn't matter which order, but I'll, I'll say Spanish first, so it's the probability of not Spanish and not French. You could have also written F complement and S complement, but those are those three numbers. This was 0.56, this was 0.14. This was 0.12, all right? So I would have gotten 0.82 again. Just now I'm using set notation. You also have a third option if you want. We know that all of these probabilities have to add up to one, and the only group I don't want is the two languages. So I could have used the complement rule and say the probability that you speak at most one language Oh my gosh, I'm having a great time spelling tonight. The probability that you speak at most long, one language is one, right? Your, what your sample space has to add up to, one minus the probability that you speak two languages. Because these are the only people I don't want to include, so I can also just throw that number out. Who are the people that speak both languages? Well, if you're speaking two languages, again, if you're speaking both, we go to our Venn diagram, we look at our football and say, well, that was 18%. Okay, so let me scooch this all the way back up, right? So then I would just say, well, this is 1 minus 0.18. And when we go to our calculator there, with the complement rule, we've got 82%. So you've got three ways of getting 82%, right? You can add the areas using just words in between, the, in between those parentheses, right? I could actually use set notation, still add the numbers, get 82%, or I could use the complement rule, that the only people I want to exclude are the ones that speak two languages. So there's our beginning look at a Venn diagram. We still have quite a few more problems that involve this Venn diagram, and we'll catch you on the next, uh, next page.